Hi, this is Jess at Wax On Studio in Asheville, and today I'm going to show you how I combine a few things that I love, batik, candle making, and reusing special materials, like local beeswax, into one cool project. At my studio, we use pure local beeswax for all of our batik work. We also boil our batiks to remove the wax. All the wax that we use in the batik project will melt out of the fabric and up to the top of the pot. I actually have a whole blog post about how to do the boil out method. One of the best things about the boil out method is that you can reclaim all that wax that comes to the surface and cools. What can you do with reclaimed beeswax besides batik with it again? You can make dip candles. To do this project, you'll need a few things. A pouring pot to melt the wax in, some candle wick designed for dip candles, a double boiler setup so that your wax is being heated by water and is not directly on the heat source, and a few helpful things like these wooden dowels that I use to help me dip multiple candles at once. Cut your wick to be twice as long as your pouring pot is tall. We're gonna make these candles in sets of twins, so two at a time. Because I'm recycling beeswax from the batik process, the wax I'm using looks like lots of pieces of thin flakes. This is very particular to how I'm removing my wax. These are all the cooled beeswax layers from the top of the last few weeks' boil pots. It might not look very pretty, but the important thing is, is that it's all dry. You don't want to get any water into your melted wax. So the first thing I need to do is melt down all this wax. I'm gonna stuff as much into my pouring pot as I can. I'm using a tiny electrical burner set to about medium heat and an old pot that I got from a thrift store. Fill your pot about halfway up with tap water and wait until the wax melts enough to put more in. The higher your wax level, the taller your candles can be. Keep adding wax until the pour pot is totally full. You have to start each wick slowly by coaxing it down into the wax. A naked wick will resist going straight in the first time because it's just not heavy enough to sink without a little assistance. Get it nice and coated, but don't forget to leave room at the top to hold them and to light them. Now that they're set up, I like to use my dowels to help. At first, we're just collecting warm wax onto the wicks to make sure they're hanging straight. I like to dip multiple sets at a time to save time and to feel productive. As soon as they start building up some layers, they're going to get too hot. I like to cool my candles down in a bucket of water in between dips. Cool candles grow faster. If your candle is holding too much heat, it will stop growing because all that wax is just melting right back off again. You'll notice that drips are starting to collect at the end of your candles. Don't worry, we'll trim those off later for a cleaner look. I think that dip candles should be at least as thick as your fingers. Too skinny and they'll burn too fast. Keep cooling them because the bigger they are, the more heat they can hold. Mine are starting to get a little too big here and they're gonna start sticking to each other soon. Time to do them one set at a time. I think of these last dips as the finishing layers. Pay attention and make sure you don't have any drips or bumps on the candle bodies. Dip until you're satisfied with their size. While they're warm, gently lay them out and slice off the bottoms. If you wait till they're cold, you'll really have to struggle to cut through them and that can make them look flaky and messy. Too hot and they'll get squished or bent while you cut. You can do one last dip after slicing off the bottoms to smooth over the cut, but you don't have to. Let them hang to cool thoroughly and enjoy your candles.